And we are at Kilbourne Hall with the great Eric Wyatt, one of our favorite albums of 2014, Borough of Kings, now the man in the flesh with us. Eric, welcome to Rochester. Glad to be in Rochester. Thank you, Rochester, for the love. And uh, glad you enjoy the new album. Eric, talk about your influences coming up. Well, uh, briefly, uh, if I could, Sonny Rollins was a good friend of my father, and the, the horn that I play and actually recorded Borough of Kings on was an, a horn that Sonny had given my father, and I now play it. So it has a lot of the sound maybe that you hear that gives you that feeling. It's a lot of it could be, you know, maybe somebody's in the horn, but of course I work hard at it, and my dad had it, and, you know. But I um, definitely am a man, Sonny Rollins of John Coltrane, Joe Henderson, and I had a cat that taught me a lot about music. He's no longer with us. His name was Arthur Rames. He was really my first major influence because he played at such a very high level when I met him. And uh, it was an amazing player. He used to play with Reggie Workman and uh, Rashid Ali. So I learned a lot from Arthur that me people may not know, but a lot of things that I, my reactionary things or things I've heard and react to sound-wise, I learned a lot of that from studying with Arthur Rames. We're speaking with Eric Wyatt here on Jazz 90.1. Eric, talk about the lost art of the burn, because so many musicians today are just, for whatever reason, are just afraid to let themselves go and feel the moment, but you don't. You are deep in the moment, and or there's live or in the studio. Why are so many of the cats coming up now just afraid to just take that extra step? You know, I think the educational thing is one avenue, but uh, what you are speaking on the element that I have, it comes from life, man. You know, this music is life and how you live. And um, I hate to say it, I just recently lost my mother, but that hasn't like changed my uh, ideal. Or it made me actually more intense now because now I feel like uh, I gotta honor her life by being her son and playing the music that she enjoyed. But a lot of cats are not. Um, they're not willing to take a chance on themselves. A lot of this music is re reactionary. You can learn a lot of music, but you got to get on stage and you got to let either somebody tell you how good you sound or tell you you need to work on it. You need to be told that you got work to do and understand it because I will say, if you think about all the cats that came up when Sonny Rollins was playing, it was Joe Hennis. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Dexter Gordon, Coleman Hawkins. These cats were never walking around thinking they were the cat. It was a bunch of cats, and uh, you could go out any any night. And a brief story, I'll just tell you, I, speaking with Sonny, which I have spoken several times, he told me one time he landed in Chicago at 5 o'clock in the morning, and there was a club they used to go to that would never close. And he took a cab to go to the hotel, but he asked the driver to drive by the club, and in the window was Lester Young playing his horn at 5 o'clock in the morning. See, that kind of stuff... I think it's lost, and uh, you got to be out here on stage performing this music. We're speaking with Eric White here on Jazz 90.1. He's playing, he just finished a set, and he'll be playing a second set in about 15 minutes or so. Eric, again, thank you so much for spending time with us, and thank you for coming to The Rock, and most importantly, thank you for Borough of Kings. Thank you. I'm glad to be in. Uh, there will definitely be another a sequel. It won't be Borough of Kings, too, but I definitely got something on, you know, on the horizon.